Okay, so my other question, and I mentioned being a confirmation sponsor earlier this year, and I've always been conscious that I don't have a really good understanding of confirmation, and also it seems like a lot of Catholics, even well-educated Catholics, are not super confident in their understanding of confirmation, and specifically, like, my, the way I would put the question is, why are there these two uh, – there, there are more than two sacraments of initiation, but 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 – why are baptism and confirmation these separate sacraments? I mean, is confirmation is is it giving you something qualitatively different? Is it giving giving you something more, just just more of the same? I mean, you said we already have the gifts of the Holy Spirit if we're baptized, so we're just getting more of the gifts. I mean, what is the sort of like specific, not just quantitative difference between confirmation and baptism? How can we understand this sacrament and appreciate it better? So that's one of my favorite topics, and the oh, book just published on this, if your readers want to look at it further, is by Father Romanus Cesario. It's called The Seven Sacraments of the Catholic Church. Oh, wow. Just published by Baker, Great. and it's selling very well. I think it's his best book, um, and uh, of course, you know, he would be a I might have person. to have him on. Yes, and he, of course, his doctor, he's a moral theologian, is, but his doctor was in sacraments. This, he's a true Thomist. But the, okay. the, the answer is, this is a profound question, and, and it's never been taught. When we all did CCD, you're just getting more grace. Okay, why are we, what, what, we were never told why. So this is the, and it comes down to the fact that, the, that baptism and confirmation give us two things. One, they give us sanctifying grace, yes. And by the way, as you, we all know, sanctifying grace is something which is losable, but baptism and confirmation also give us a sacramental character, a distinct mm -hmm. sacramental character, which is not just a spiritual cosmetic, like a tattoo on the soul, but Aquinas explains it's a power. And this is why baptism and confirmation, unlike confession, uh, anointing of the sick, or even marriage, this is why baptism and confirmation, no matter what, can't be repeated because you can only right. receive this power once. And what is the power of baptism? The power of baptism, the character of baptism, is a configuration to the soul that enables us to receive the seven sacraments, to enter into the sacraments of the church. Without baptism, and therefore without that character, even if you were to, this would be horrible, don't do this anybody, go to mass without being baptized, or even go to confession and say all true sins and all the right prayers, and the priest were to say the right prayer over you, nothing would happen because you don't yet have the power to receive that sacramental uh, effect. Hmm. Baptism gives us a character, namely a power to enter into the sacramental order and receive the sacraments of the church. Confirmation is an active power, enabling us to withstand and be confirmed in any opposition from within or without that might occur vis-a-vis -vis the faith and the sacraments in the church. And this is why in the old rite, as I'm sure you know, after you were confirmed, the bishop used to slap you on the cheek lightly. That was to signify you are now with the power, configured with the power to withstand opposition mm. uh, from within or without. Wow. And, uh, and this is why, just to make it very interesting, because when I was in, uh, I believe you're in New York City, are you not? That's currently where you reside? Yeah. Yeah. So I was at yeah. St. Joseph's in downtown uh uh, one of our Dominican parishes there for a couple years ago, about 10 years ago. And this is why when you do marriage preparation, of which we did a lot, the the church, she, in order to have a sacramental marriage, she requires that both the man and the woman, the bride and the groom be baptized. And you're not required, strictly speaking, to be confirmed, but the church highly recommends it. Why? It's because in marriage, there will be many difficulties that it, a couple will face in their life and in just being together, raising a family in the modern world, confirmation right. is helpful to withstand that. So, um, yeah, I would recommend Father Cesario in that book. It's a tremendous book. Um, it's very Great. unique. And um, thank you for asking. That's one of my favorite topics. We have not sure. yet spent enough time on sacramental character. Uh, sure, ladies. sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I go to St. Vincent Ferrer. And um, my pastor, Father Peter Martyr Youngworth, I asked him this question, and he did mention something also about, I don't know if it's the current liturgical law or the old liturgical law, but certain roles that you can't fill unless you're confirmed. So this is something that the law might be able to teach us about, like the sort of the public-facing nature of 
confirmed people. It's similar to, you know, the birth of the, the church, not at Pentecost, but from the side of Christ, and then the confirmation of the church, you know, at, at Pentecost. But he was saying, I think, I think to be elector, uh, you had to be confirmed and things like that um, in the old uh, liturgical uh, rules. So um, that's that's kind of an interesting indication of how they were thinking about that. 